Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. Welcome to my channel, Life Home and My Linux Journeys. And in this journey, we're going to continue installing a Linux operating system. And the next in line, we'll see here in a minute, the next in line will be Ubuntu. So we're going to install Ubuntu in today's video. I'm going to go over to my desktop here and bring up distrowatch.com and let's look. So far, we've installed MX Linux, which is based on Debian and Antix. We got Mint, Linux Mint, which is based on Ubuntu and Debian. Endeavor OS, which is based on Arch Linux. Debian, which is based on Debian, which I just covered. Now we're going to select Ubuntu. So let's click on that. And it says it's based on Debian. It's from the Isle of Man, and it comes in the GNOME and Unity desktops. For the category, it says it's Beginners, Desktops, Immutable, Server, and Live Medium. Okay, so if we come down here and click on their homepage, if you click right here, which is the first option that you see and it's in your face, you're going to get the paid version. And I'm not interested in the paid version, and if you are, that's, that would be great. I would suggest you use Ubuntu for a minute and then make up your mind whether you want you need the pro version. So I'm going to go up here, though, where it says Get Ubuntu and left click on that. And right here it says Ubuntu Desktop, Free and Reliable Desktop OS. So if you click there, and now we've got to click one more time. This also tells you some stuff about the Ubuntu itself. Okay. Now, right here, we're going to we'll click here. You can see it's a pretty good size download, six gigabytes. Click on that. And it says, thank you for downloading Ubuntu. It'll take it a second. You direct it where you want to do it. I've already, it's right here. So I've already downloaded it, 6.1 gigabytes. Okay. You download your ISO, put it on a USB stick because it won't fit on a DVD. If you even know what a DVD is. <laughs> anyway, put it on a USB stick and boot into it. And that's where I'm going to pick up the installation at. So let me get rid of this. Let's go to the desktop here. When we got, I took some snapshots in the very beginning. I run in FFmpeg just to make sure it was or wasn't installed. It was not. So I installed it by running sudo app update and, and sudo app install FFmpeg. Here is the command that I actually used. Now that screen that was up there, that's what you're going to see until this one gets through loading. So I'm going to select English, say next. Now here you got some accessibility options that are awesome. I know several people that will use this if, they, if it's available for under seeing and hearing. You got typing, slow keys and sticky keys. You got mouse keys and a zoom function but i'm going to leave all that as default and i'm going to click next now the next section is going to be for your keyboard i should always suggest typing in a test of some sort which includes numbers and symbols or letters numbers and symbols there's my wi-fi now this i found very unusual i just downloaded this iso and it's telling me that there's an update available already for the installer so, I mean, you don't have no choice but to go ahead and do this. And you can see it's going to tell me to close it. And should see the installer on the right side of your desktop there. My uh, head might be in the way, but the installer is also up in the upper left-hand corner. All right, I'm just going to check. Make sure we are recording. It's in videos. All right, so the installer's back up, selected English. These are the same options until we get back to after the keyboard here. Connection. All right, so interactive installation. That's for users who want to be guided through the step-by-step -step installation. The automatic installation is for people who have a YAD system and they want to deploy the system on multiple machines. Okay, I'm going to select the extended version, which will allow us to download the third-party software as well as some additional media formats. 
Now, if you was in a virtual box installing this, you probably wouldn't necessarily need to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna manually install. Now I had a little hiccup right here, and I'll show you. There's the disk. We'll click on plus, and we're gonna cancel. Or actually, I got confused. <laughs> I wanted to see if it was there. You'll see what I'm talking about here. I'm going to set up the first partition, which will be for the EFI boot. And I'm going to give it a whole gig, 1024 megabytes. And I'm going to select use as VFAT and the mount point boot. Although boot EFI was not there. Now all of a sudden we see two different partitions, the slash boot, the one I just set up and boot EFI, and they're both right or one gig plus. So that was a little confusing to have that just pop up. So I'll go ahead and set it up with giving it eight gigabytes of swap, which is 8192 megabytes. Select swap, and let's use the remainder on the root drive. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click next here. Then I'm going to type in my name. Oop. I click back, and I'll show you the reason why I click back in a second here when we get to it. Once again, I'm setting up the EFI partition, formatted as VFAT, select slash boot, and now we got two <laughs> boot partitions again. There is a way out of this, and I'm going to show you that when we get through here. Eight gigabytes of swap. And the remainder for the root drive or C drive. Now I click next, create an account, give it your give it a name, what you want your computer name, then the username. Now you want to need a password. You'll have to type it in twice to confirm. And I'm also going to require my password to log in. It correctly selected my time zone in the United States. The Chicago is in the central time zone. And here's what it's going to do. Now watch this. I'm going to click back and back and back. And we'll set it up one more time. I'm not sure what happens here. But it's not right. Whatever it is. And again, I'm going to give it. This time I gave it 512 unless I change that. That's not root. It needs to go to EFI or boot slash boot. It won't let me do it. So let's select, make sure your drive is selected right there. Now we've got our boot EFI automatically set up for me as soon as I selected the hard drive. I didn't, I didn't notice that until just now when I was making the installation here. So now once we get it set back up, we're free to go. We shouldn't have to type in anything else. It should already be pre-filled. Now we got our three system partitions, boot EFI, swap, and root and we're going to continue now we only see those three partitions now we can install and it was 1202 at this point right here so we'll take a look at their cards if you wanted to see what the cards look like what information is on there enhance your creativity with audacity Blender, Caden Live, and Godot. None of those were installed by default. I guess it's saying it can be installed. Great for gaming. It's private and secure. Power up your productivity. And that was, this is the last card. Maybe not. Access for everyone, language support, Orca screen reader, that's for that vision impaired. All right, so this would be the debug screen, and it does work. And I will actually watch the entire thing, watching, seeing what it did. There's the MKV we're recording right now. And I chose to use FFmpeg to install this rather than trying to install a 
software to do this. So I just installed FFmpeg and ran it. And we're going to speed this up times a thousand percent in Caden Live. <laughs> Otherwise, the entire installation took about 20 minutes from start to finish to first boot. And I left this in there, even though I sped it up in case you wanted to see yourself what it was going to be doing. Setting up our locales. And obviously, if there's an error in some kind here, you can it'll show you what that error error is. Just mounting everything. Might as well look and see what they got. Additional drivers, calendar, camera, clocks. Let's see what the system monitor says. Swaps not available. So I'm gonna remedy that right this second because I know GNOME disk is installed. Now you can do this in the command line, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just highlight it in GNOME disk. And let's activate the swap partition and authenticate. And now it'll show up as being active, available right there, 8.2 gigabytes. And it's working the processor pretty good there. Four and a half gigabytes of RAM usage. Now I will check that after I reboot and we'll see that the swap partition was available and activated. Not sure why it didn't get activated at least up until this point. Some more programs they got installed by default. App Center, I'm not gonna open any of that up. Help, I believe opens up the web page. I find out in part two after I've looked around in Ubuntu. Just checking to make sure we're still recording. FFmpeg is doing its thing. I sort of could not figure out development release. Distribution data outdated. Please check for an update of the dis for distro info data. Info data. See user share doc distro info data. Read me Debian for details. Which I thought was interesting. Which is why precisely I, I try to watch what's happening. Speed this up again. I believe we're seven minutes in at this point as far as the actual installation goes. Eight minutes, nine minutes. All right, these are the programs that it's going to update. Right there, packages that will be upgraded. Cups, Cups BSD, Cups Client, Cups Common, Core Drivers. So this would be a list of all the programs that are going to be upgraded. I'm setting up the system right now. And I was looking through this, and down there at the very end of the list, we even get WGIT which you will probably have to get anyway, <laughs> right there. Speed this up again. This is actually, I was trying to find it about that would tell me what it actually is. It's Nautilus is the name of the file browser. We'll go ahead and create a folder to save this. I saved some, I took some screenshots in the beginning and then after I installed FFmpeg, I'm recording and I, I'm like a, create a folder for that so that I can copy it right over onto a USB drive. There's the screenshots. We're going to copy that and I see the installer is finished. Let's paste that in there so it'll be there. 
All right, I'm gonna continue testing long enough to shut all shut FFmpeg down, plug in a USB drive, and copy this these files over. All right, so this is the first boot. I've already rebooted, and this is FFmpeg again. It says welcome to Ubuntu. Complete your setup with additional settings, and we'll have you up and running in no time. Once again, you can select the paid version. You can help improve. Ubuntu, I would ordinarily say yes, but in this case, I'm going to select no. You could open up the App Center and go ahead and get some software. But that's it. We've installed Ubuntu. And I wasn't sure. I don't, they got all these snaps installed. And I'll show you that later on here. You can see all those snap files, the loops. And so it's kind of confusing sometimes to see exactly how it's busted up. Swap is activated still. That's nice. File system, it says on ext4, we've used 6.6 .6 gigs. There we go. So here we got 6.2 gigabytes used on device SDA3. You name hyphen A gives you 6.8.0.36 generic kernel. NeoFetch is not going to be installed. HTOP is not going to be installed. Interesting though, that how it tells you you can install it with the snap or the app. ScreenFetch is not installed. Not available as a snap either, so that's good. <laughs> so let's install that real quick. Give it a password. Say yes. Okay. Now let's clear that screen and run a screen fetch. Ubuntu 2404 Noble Kernel 6.8.0-38. GNOME Desktop 4601, I believe it said. So we've installed Ubuntu. Let me go back to my front view here. Now, that's Ubuntu. We just went through the installation and everything. And I spent, a, a, I don't know, I'm going to say about five hours playing around in it, getting it, trying to get it set up. And I'll be back with part two, actually showing and looking around in the installed system. This was installed on real hardware, Optiplex 790, I believe. And we'll see that later on. So peace out, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on another video. Bye.